I wanted to, I know that we're doing a great job, but I want us to do even better. Um, I watched the uh, president give a, um, what's that thing once a year he gives State of Union? And people in white suits getting up, you know, every like 30 seconds. You know, uh, most of that information was completely useless and irrelevant to most of us. And I'm thinking these are dignified people, very educated, politi political people in the, in the highest form of our government. But still, there is this level of fake excitement that they present there getting up and clapping and everything. What you hear today, what you hear here is life changed. When you hear the word of the living God, whether it's going to be a child from the nursery presenting it, or whether it's going to be an older gentleman or somebody like me who's growing a beard to gain silent wisdom. <laughs> Whoever it is, I want us as a church to be passionate and alive for the name that is above every name on this earth and every planet, every universe and every galaxy. It is the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody give that name a shout of praise. Somebody give that name the worth, the honor and the glory it deserves. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You may take your seats. When I was in Philippines, the pastor pulled me aside and showed me photos where on Saturday they have leaders meeting and sometimes they play our clips so they show the clips there and so and I said oh wow that is so awesome huge you know about a thousand sanctuary three two hundred leaders on Saturday they meet and they watch our clips and he said Pastor Vlad he says I only have one problem with you and I said what is that he said somebody puts shots on people he says and I see them sleeping and yawning over he said you're sweating he says, you're preaching fire. He says, we're on our, on our feet in the Philippines watching video and then we see your people. He says, either kill the camera shots, don't show them or he says, resurrect your church. And I said, you know those footages, I was like, that was bad cameras, long time ago, bad people. I'm like, we got new people now, new cameras and new revival. Come on somebody. Hallelujah. But it did, it did something to my heart. I realized when I come back, I'm like one thing, I want to retrain our people that during worship, that this altar is for you. That when the message is presented, that we are free. I don't want only people in the White House or in the State of Union getting up and clapping. I want to shout when somebody can see clearly. I want to shout when somebody's life is rescued from drugs. I want to celebrate that. I want our church not to be a quiet church. I want it to be an alive church. Maybe some of you are saying, but it's all about emotion. Really? This is life we're talking about. Think about if it's your sister. Think about if it's your mom. Think about if, if, if it's your child. And you may say, well, I like to receive quietly. I watched some of your Instagram stories how you receive football quietly. The devil is a liar. I'm not talking about volume. I'm not talking about screaming. I'm not talking about drums. I'm talking about life. And you know places that are quiet are cemeteries. But hospitals where children are born, there's loudness there. There is screaming there. There is yelling there. Confusion there. Because there is life. I just pray that God will visit us with life again. In the name of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for Jesus Christ one more time. Amen. We added these microphones <laughs> to help you express your life so that people all over the world who are watching us right now, hundreds, could also be a part of that. Amen. We welcome every person who's visiting us for the first time. I even heard that uh, dogs are paid us a visit today as well and so um, so we want to give a round of applause to every first time guest today let's give let's welcome them right now thank you for coming thank you we love you let's welcome all the online viewers right now on Facebook and YouTube we love you my pastor is uh, finished just speaking in Sacramento 
Rickard just finished preaching in Spokane and right after the service I'm going to be ministering in Vancouver, Washington. Today we're touching four different cities at the same time. Thousands locally and millions globally. Amen. I really wanted to, in growth track step two just finished, I really want to emphasize one more time the importance of those of you who have children. I want to implore you and ask you to serve at Kids Zone. Most of our volunteers at Kids Zone are teenagers who don't have children. They're serving there because they have a passion for Jesus. If you have children, you must serve in Kids Zone. Why? Because somebody else is serving your kids. It's time for you to invest in other people's kids. Very soon we will make a rule that you can't bring your kids as part of Hungry Gen if you don't serve a Kids Zone. Mm. You're like, I ain't coming to church. Well, you better stop coming now than later. If that's what's gonna trip you up. Why? Because if teenagers are, there are teenagers every Sunday, they have not got a break for one Sunday for six, seven months. They're helping your kids. And it's time for you to invest into other generation as well, into other kids. If you are a young person, I want to let you know that the kids are number one priority. There you can give a prophetic word and if you miss it, you won't be called a false prophet. <laughs> And if you pray for healing and nothing happened, you won't get blackmailed. You'll be just fine. That doesn't mean that we, we practice on kids, no. But kids receive so much easier and so much better. I told my friend Ivan, I said, God has a calling for you to minister to the masses. But I said, until you can lead children to salvation, baptism of the Holy Spirit and healing, God will not open the door for masses. Today God opening doors for him and God's going to open doors for you. But the place we want, we want the best of the best to begin to serve our children. Because these children will be serving us five, six, seven, eight, ten years down the road. They will be preaching to us. They will be ministering to us. So I want you to begin to pray for that. If you've been coming to Hungry Gen but you have not made a decision to become a part of that, I think that now is the time. Begin to sign up to growth track so you can be a part of our family and you can serve for God's glory. Amen. I am super excited as Pastor Ilya mentioned next month is the harvest month. We're going to, I'm going to go to a few places this month and next month to preach the gospel. We're going to Guatemala as a church. Also that we're going to faith assembly, going to have a race to deliver and on our Easter, just for Easter, we will have a service on Saturday night and two services on Sunday and we're believing that each one of us can bring three new people that we've never brought to church on the Easter service. So all three services we will see people come to know Jesus. If you're a part of that vision, give yourself a round of applause. Hallelujah. So many exciting things are happening. I mean the Spanish book is being translated in about two, two, three weeks is going to be done. The Holy Spirit EP is going to be released and it's going to be so many awesome and incredible wonderful things that are coming up. But right now we're going to go into God's Word. I want to speak a message that will be titled, When you're waiting for your healing and it's not coming. So I've never preached this message before. And it's a different one from the first service. I even dressed differently. The last time I wore this shirt was when our video got uh, two million hits on Facebook and I sweated through it three times. So washed it and never wore it since. So uh, we're not believing for some viral video to go viral today but I just, just feel a little bit more anointing wearing it today. <laughs> Amen. Judges chapter 3. Let's open to Judges chapter 3 verse 1 and verse 2. Now these are the nations which the Lord left that he might test, somebody say test, that he might test Israel by them. That is all who had not known any of the wars in Canaan. This was only so that the generations of children of Israel might be taught to know war. At least those who had not formally known it. I want to speak today about healing. I believe that God wants to heal people today. I believe that healing is for today. I believe salvation is for today. And not only is something we believe but it's something that we practice. It's something that we are going to take risk on. Something that we're going to pray for. I made a decision about four years ago that every time I go outside of our church and I preach the message of Jesus, unless the senior pastor asks me not to pray for the sick, 
which it already happened one time I will always give an altar call for salvation and I will pray for the sick and I will ask for testimonies I don't pray for altar call for salvation without calling people to the front and I'm not going to pray for the sick without giving people an opportunity to test their body and testify on the spot and if somebody doesn't get healed I don't get offended because I wasn't the one healing them in the first place Jesus can defend himself just fine healing is one of the one of the important things of our ministry and it's one of the most important things in the gospel but one of the problems that happens with healings is this what I'm going to talk about is that sometimes when you pray for yourself or for others and healing doesn't manifest you know that it's the will of God you know all the promises of God you named it and you claimed it you renounced the spirit of disease and you forgave somebody you already have anointed yourself with oil, took the Holy Communion, sprayed the holy water, the anointed water and any other water that anybody else brought from Africa. You already have went through all of the hoops and you've done all of that and when the healing does not manifest. I want to talk about that today. The verse we've read said that Israel entered the promised land and there were certain nations left there. God's promise was very clear that all of those nations belonged to Israel and Israel is to conquer them and take their land from them. But it says in here that Israel did not conquer everything and certain nations were left. Now a little bit earlier we see the reason why they were left is because Israel was not interested in pursuing the fullness of God's promise. But in here chapter 3, God almost gives a different perspective on why the nations were left. He doesn't blame Israel here and says, oh, well, because you're lazy and you don't want to fight. Something that's mentioned in the first few chapters of Judges. And here it says that the Lord allowed the nations to be left. And it gives us two reasons. To teach and to test. To test Israel if they will obey God in the midst of those nations being present in that promised land and to teach that generation not to cope with those nations not to make covenant with those nations not to befriend those nations not to cohabitate with those nations but to fight and have war what do you do when the healing you're praying for they were in the promised land so you're in God's promise you are already walking in salvation like Israel in the promised land but there are still things that linger or lingered and they are left behind perhaps it's diabetes perhaps it's blindness perhaps it's deafness maybe it's a lower back pain maybe it's the problem in in your blood kidney stones and you're claiming it and you're believing it but it's just not going anywhere. You're taking the medicine but you're saying anytime we talk about healing I'm just just not sure what do I do about it. This comes also from a personal experience. There's an area of my life and in our life me and my wife's that we're believing for a breakthrough. We're walking in that and believing for that for some time and I want to share this from more of a personal not a theory or adjust the doctrine and just comfort your heart to sit and wait. I believe that every person here who believes for healing, walks in healing, has an area of their life where they're waiting for a breakthrough. Today could be that day where the breakthrough comes. Today can be that day where somebody is going to get a breakthrough. These testimonies were not just to encourage us for a one day breakthrough. These testimonies were here to give us a strength for today to be that day Come where breakthrough comes. Come today could be your day where God unties your finances. Today could be your day where God opens your eyes and you begin to see colors. Today could be your day where your ears pop open and you begin to hear clearly. 
the day could be your day where the kidney stones dissolve and you no longer have problem in your kidneys today could be your day those of you watching us on live stream where the nearsightedness that you have is no longer going to be part of your portion and you will throw away those glasses and see clearly in Jesus name today could be your day where your bones will be healed where your blood can be healed where your organs can be healed when your skin can be healed where your thyroid can be gone where your diabetes can be healed where arthritis can be defeated because Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever the same can somebody say amen somebody say today somebody say now it's my time to receive from God but the encouragement that I want to leave with us today is when you're waiting number one don't be ruled by your situation do not allow the situation that you are in right now change your faith your trust in God or maybe you went through something where the prayers were prayed but we didn't see the immediate answer it almost the devil will use those experiences against us to shave our passion for healing it says in here the Lord left those nations to test them but I believe at the same time as the Lord was testing their hearts God tests us to build our character Satan at the same time tempted Israel to draw them away from the Lord and to begin to practice what the nations were practicing the idolatry every time sickness doesn't leave right away you're entering a testing time where God says will you still burn for me love me and trust me as you're taking that medicine as you go into the doctor as you're still praying or would you allow the devil to take the scissors and start to shave off your passion before when you were sick the faith was 100% God is the healer I trust in him after first disappointment second one somebody died somebody else did not get healed you prayed for that area you prayed for that area and then you realize you know what God is the healer but you know don't put your eggs in one basket and then you become more balanced you become more calculated cautious you don't want to be too um you don't want to throw yourself under the bus God is good yes yes but in this area I, I wouldn't wouldn't put a lot of hope in that the devil will use our situation to change our understanding of God's promise of healing even if you treat that sickness and it's gone you get healed and it's gone but if Satan succeeded in changing my faith because of my situation he already won uh, devil I just want to let you know today I will give you no pleasure and give you the feeling that you're winning with hungry generation because with us our faith is not based on the symptoms leaving it's based on the blood that was spilled on the Calvary 2000 years ago it's a settled fact that Jesus is the same yesterday today and forever whether I get healed or not he is my healer whether things change in my body or not he is who he said he was he is the same and I trust him because of the Calvary so devil you lost this battle with me this temptation is too late trust in God when Job was being tempted the Bible says that Job Satan came to Job and he said this he says touch his bones men will give anything he says the whole idea that you got um, that his finances were gone no problem I know why Job is serving you he'll get them all back uh, the kids kids are gone mm. but Satan said this touch his bones he says and you will see he will denounce you the whole idea of Job getting sick was Satan trying to prove to God make him sick and he'll forsake his faith Satan knows that sickness throws people off balance when somebody's sick and they're serving God it throws them into confusion 
he says bone for bone, he says skin for skin, he says man will give everything, man will give up his religion when it's not working for his health no more. But see Satan lost that battle with Job and he's gonna lose that battle with you in Jesus name. Because Satan is convinced if you don't get healed after the first prayer, Satan is convinced that just because the last person you prayed for or somebody in your family passed away after they've been prayed for, he is convinced now he got you. Now you're gonna give everything up because he thinks that you're only serving God for what you get on this earth. But devil, you have been duped. You've been deceived. It might have happened to this person and to that person. But the God that I serve is able to deliver. But if He does not deliver to your gods, O King, we will not bow. And your idols, we will not serve. We serve one God. He is seated in the heaven. He created the heaven and the earth. He made our soul, our body and our spirit. And this God is coming back again on a white horse with a mighty army. He will set up His kingdom on this earth and to His kingdom there shall be no end and that kingdom we belong to. So I just, I just want to establish my faith today. My situation is real. Your situation might be real but I ask you that your situation doesn't become something that changes who you are and what you believe in. In the Garden of Eden there were two trees. One was the tree of life. One was the tree of knowledge and good and evil. The tree of knowledge of good and evil. I want you to watch this. God said, don't eat of it. God didn't tell Adam to cut it down. Let me say it again. God did not give Adam an assignment to cut down the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He only told him, don't eat of it. There are some situations in your life that are in your garden of paradise right now that are not good. And you might not have the chainsaw to cut them down. But the instruction of the Lord for you is, as you're waiting for your healing, don't eat of the tree of your sickness. It will poison your perspective. When Adam ate of the tree of good and evil, tree of sickness I mean, good and evil what happened to him he started to see differently he started to see God differently he started to hide from God he started to blame other people his perspective changed when you have a sickness in your garden and that tree is growing bigger and you don't have an axe or a chainsaw to chop it off and you're doing everything and it's still standing there do not go to that tree to eat from that tree meaning don't let that tree nourish you change your perspective change your view on God steal your passion for God its presence should not become your diet don't eat at the tree of diabetes don't eat at the tree of back pain. Listen, if it's there, you feel its presence, you see its presence and it's there. But listen, eat of the tree of life. Let God's word define who God is, not your symptoms. Do not let the unanswered prayers, failed attempts to receive healing become the filter through which you see God now or else you will be like Adam hiding behind the bush, hiding behind your unanswered prayers, hiding behind somebody did not get healed, hiding behind why is this still happening to me. You'll be always hiding in bushes instead of hiding in God. Every person here has a tree in their garden has something that is messing up with your faith, has something that is still not being done, not being answered. Abraham was a wealthy man but the wife couldn't conceive. Hagar could conceive but couldn't find a husband. Someone is in this room has a tree in their paradise. Oh, you will never post about that tree on your Instagram or your Facebook. It, it's, it's a thing you're battling with. It's a thing you're standing for. It's a thing you might have questions for. And I'm not giving you today a tool to chop that down. Because there are trees you have no resources to chop it down. I just ask you, do not eat from that tree. Do not derive your identity. Do not derive your doctrine. Do not derive your life from it. 
let it stand there and you say you know what Lord I will live off of the tree of life your promises your word and your truth I'm not gonna let what happened to my mom to my dad my uncle to my child I'm not gonna let it what it happened to my kidneys to become what I believe now I will let the tree of life become my nourishment and my source for my doctrine somebody give us some praise right now your situation can change but God's word doesn't change the sickness will change the moment you die your sickness will stop but God's word will continue to be a God's word when you die the moment that sickness can be removed by medicine by healing or death but God's word cannot be removed by nobody death devil curses demons aliens nobody can remove Thanos can't remove God God is all by himself his word is the law his word has power trust in his word let's feed off of his word Say, Lord, your word, say, your word is my life. Not my circumstances and not my situation. Some of your situation, my situation can be changed with just one million dollars. If somebody gives you a million dollars, 40% of your prayer requests are answered right here. For most of you, it's 95%. It's gone. The mood changes, Facebook posts change, your Instagram, change. everything changes about you. Remember this, God's word doesn't change. And God says to us today, He's testing us. If something is not being done as God promised, God is watching. Not to see, do you have faith? But God says, I want to grow your faith. Because when God tests us, it's different than when a teacher tests us. Teachers test like this. They're kind of mean, you know, they throw you a test and they kind of sit there pretend that they don't know anything. God is the only one when he gives a test, he stands beside you and whispers the answers. <laughs> he says, uh, don't worry about it. You're not going to die. And if you will, you'll see me. So everything's going to be fine. <laughs> Either way, devil is a loser. <laughs> You're the winner. But God, I'm not sure about this. God says, I, I got you. I'm here. God always whispers the answers when he gives you a test. I remember when our ministry was going through a dry season, very difficult season and I had thoughts bombarding. There was temptation of the devil coming into my mind saying this, your ministry is over. I'm like, I'm only 23 years old. I'm only 24 years old and some of you know kind of what we went through and I had these, these thoughts that were coming, people are leaving. People were leaving our church so fast. People are moving out of three cities. They say, I hate graduating our leaders even graduating and saying try cities as a whole it's just nothing here to do we're just moving we're, we're moving and it's just people move it's like somebody drove them from tri cities and I remember my heart being broken I was like God this is not taking off this is not growing you told me that our church will be like a winkle store people will come from all over now it's everything opposite people are leaving to all over and the year after year year after year about 10 years and they started to sap on me this this feeling your best days were behind you cruise just put a cruise control on but every time I had that I had this whisper that was coming to my ears it was God giving me clues to the answer on my test and God I felt he was saying this he said when Gideon's army got smaller I didn't tell him to pack his bags and go home I told him to advance not retreat he said advance not retreat and I heard another voice because I'm, I felt that I was being tested by God and I heard another voice said when when Samuel got a disappointment with Saul he anointed the first king and he didn't turn out to be who Samuel expected and Samuel wept and cried he said I told Samuel stop weeping fill your horn with oil and go to Bethlehem because I found another man and I felt God whispering and says the best day in front of you all of the years and disappointments do not let them shave off of your passion listen you will still see what I promise but you have to go ahead still Red Sea is in front of you you will feel like you will drown your future has no hope for you but take one step forward I am with you you're being tested but I am your teacher and I hold your hand and I'm giving you the answers keep going forward keep going forward keep going forward your best days are in front of you 
healings will still happen. Deliverances will still happen. Salvations will still happen. The masses will still come to God. God will use you. God is not done with you. You did not come to the Red Sea to drown. You came here to be cleansed. You came here for your enemies to die. You will come out of this better. You will come out of this stronger. You will come out of this bigger. And I look now what happens in our church and I'm thinking, ah devil, ah devil, you devil. I Now I know why all of that pressure was there. You smelled the victory. You knew it was coming. I didn't even know it was coming. You knew. You saw something I didn't see. And I see now, but God was there and whispering. And today we see those things unfolding slowly. I want to encourage you. Do not be ruled by your situation. Even if your situation has been there for a long, long time. If you don't let your situation change your faith, your faith will change your situation. Can I say that again? If you don't let your situation change your passion for God, your passion for God will change your situation. And that's the first thing I want to share is God was testing Israel. Meaning He was seeing, are you going to still be loyal to me? Are you going to still be obedient? While you're there saying, God, but you said you're going to heal me. And God says, I know what I said. No need to remind me. But I also, you said you're going to follow me. Are you going to follow me? even when it hurts. Are you gonna love me? Even sometimes you don't understand why certain things happen. Number two, when you don't know about healing, know your healer. Sometimes when you pray for healing for some people and they don't get healed, for those of us who are kind of new in this, or then you pray for yourself. You pray for your spouse or maybe you start practicing on your pets at home. Um, whatever you know helps you to build your faith and uh, and you don't see the healings a lot of times people come to this and this is what they say to me or they will say to you you know I'm, I'm, I'm not sure about this healing thing and I say it's okay that you're not sure about the healing thing in fact I think Job when he went through sickness I think he also probably had some moments where he was like ah I'm not sure about healing uh, Paul had some situations too a thorn in the flesh, persecution. I'm pretty sure Paul had moments where he's like, I'm not sure about this. Even John the Baptist, the greatest prophet ever born to a woman. He's like, I'm not sure about this. this. This Jesus, the Messiah. But what I loved about Paul and what I loved about Job, they did not talk about, I know healing. He says, I know my Redeemer lives. Paul says, I know who I have believed in. Paul did not say, I know what I believe. Sometimes you go through stuff that you don't really know now what's happening. People are like, so why this person didn't get healed? You're like, ah, I, 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 there are people who are professors, they know everything. Don't be like those people. But not knowing or being confused is also not good. What do you do? When you don't know about healing because people didn't get healed that you prayed for or somebody you believed for did not get healed and all the great men of God prayed for them. Do not lose your faith and knowledge in the healer when you're not sure about healing you can be not sure about healing and still know the healer and saying you know what? I'm not sure how about this situation is turning around but one thing I know my healer my redeemer the one who bled on the cross the one who defeated hell death and the grave the one who said three days later I'm coming back Romans put a stamp on it, put the soldiers, Pharisees got their dealings going on and Jesus like a boss. Got up, left the grave. The angels removed the stone to let people know he's not there no more. You're guarding an empty grave. He did not need the angels to remove the stone. The angels removed the stone to tell those guys, crazy idiots, that you're guarding an empty tomb. Guys, go do something better with your life. Don't guard an empty tomb. He rose again. He could go through the walls and he ascended into heaven after many days of telling his disciples and this same Jesus is coming back and that's who your faith is in. Come on, come on. Never base your faith in healing. It will fail you. Base your faith in the healer. He will sustain you. People say, how do you know 
that you are saved how do you know that you didn't lose your salvation I said you're missing the whole point I don't have faith in salvation my faith is in the Savior I don't have faith in deliverance my faith is in a deliverer and the Bible says those who trust in him not in a doctrine not in a thesis not in a dogma but in a person in the person in the person of Jesus they will never be put to shame they will never be put to shame anybody here believes in Jesus anybody here trusts Jesus anybody here loves Jesus anybody here decided to follow Jesus 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 it's interesting when Jesus called people he didn't call them to believe in anything but himself in fact sometimes he asked Bible says those who believe in him Christianity is not about do you believe in the book do you believe in the person our faith is in the person why because sometimes faith in healing will fail you faith in healing can fail you healing healing didn't die for you healer died for you whole Christianity is about a person not as certain doctrines though this person reveals to us doctrines but our faith is in him number three God teaches us to fight from the promise it says in Judges God left his enemies to test Israel and to know that they might know it says in verse 2 that this generation might be taught to know war God wants us to learn to fight this is only on this side of eternity the reason why he wants us to learn to fight is because he trusts us with the devil he trusts us with the devil to conquer he trusts us with diseases to conquer he trusts us with sin to conquer and he allows certain things to linger so he can empower us to fight what I want you to see is God did not want to teach Israel to cope he didn't want to teach them to cohabitate God wasn't trying to teach Israel to become good neighbors and good friends with their enemies he wanted that they wanted them to become vicious hungry brutal strong and some of you maybe this language you're one of those maybe make make peace not war make love not war maybe some of you you know this this idea of war is like Vlad you know I just I just I just want peace we understand we want peace with God we want peace with fellow men but there are demons there are sin there is sickness and we live in this world that is being destroyed by evil and you can't make peace with evil you gotta have war with evil to have peace with humanity we've been fighting the wrong war all this time and we need to fight a good war bible says paul says to timothy he says you you wage the i wage the good war he says fight a good fight of faith he says to timothy but what i want to see right now is that if you're believing right now still for healing you're walking in here you're walking in the promise of god god doesn't just want us to not to eat of the tree of knowledge of good and evil not to allow our situation to change our revelation not only does god wants us to say hey if you're not sure about healing i want you to base your faith in me not in the doctrine of healing your faith is in me i will never fail you that thing could fail you but i will never fail you but there is one more thing is god wants us to continue to fight for our healing from the position of our healing you know Abraham believed for healing of his wife for for more than 20 years probably but what I love about Abraham is that one time God put him in the promised land of his promise God gave him a promise that says I will give you a son at that moment Abraham moved with his spirit to that promise and he lived in that promise but he didn't occupy that promise for 20 years and in those 20 years God was teaching Abraham how to fight not for his healing but from his healing and the way God did it is that God changed his name and says every time you will call Sarah you are fighting a fight of faith you're declaring her a mother of nations instead of just a princess anytime she will call you for breakfast you are fighting 
a fight of faith because you're declaring him as the father of the nations instead of just the glorious father I think what the Lord wants us to do is not that this doesn't mean that if you're believing for healing of diabetes believing of blindness that every day you walk around and full of anxiety oh I just I just fight for my healing 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 for Abraham that fight was as simple and easy as changed his names and every day when that name was called a battle was being won. I believe that when God gives you a promise here, the healing is yours. I personally, after that, stop praying for it. I thank God for it. And if the thought comes back, ah, oh, you still have this problem. I said, Lord, I thank you. I am in the promised land. The darkness is leaving. This issue is resolved already. My healing is manifesting. And I move on praying for other things. You say, but what if nothing happens? I am in the promised land. God's promise is yes and amen. I believe in His promise and it's coming to pass. God is watching over His word. What if nothing will happen? I will die and go to heaven and see Jesus. And that will be the most glorious day of my life. He said, but what about that thing? In His presence, everything else is going to dissolve and nothing else is going to matter. But while I am here, I am not going to... Now, if you don't have that faith that God has given you the healing already here, if you don't have it, then pray for that faith. But when God gives you that faith, the assurance, the healing is yours. After that, you don't have to pray for it, but you can pray out of it and praise God for it. That doesn't mean you don't have to, you have to stop taking medicine because if the symptoms are still there you still need to go see the doctor you still need to go probably take the medicine but it means that the medicine and the symptoms these things don't change my location and my position which is in the promise of God I'm declaring I am thanking God I am worshiping him because I know by his stripes I have been healed can somebody say amen And so when a prayer line is happening for healing, sometimes you will not see me there for that particular problem. Why? Because uh, that issue is already resolved. That issue is already solved. You may say, but you don't see it there. I have it here. I have it here. I had a situation happen with, with my, my friend Eder when me and my wife decided to bless them with our second car. And on Saturday we decided to do that. And on Sunday we met with them. We gave him the car. Now I didn't give him the car. I gave him a promise because the car had a scratched up bumper and some tires were not really good and oil change needed to be changed so I said Aaron, Tatiana, um, we love you guys, we're giving you a car the, the, the smile just you know like went like this tears were, oh my gosh this is so awesome ah, amen. we hugged it out and we said but you're not gonna drive home with the car why? we want to fix the bumper, we want to fix the tires, we want to change the oil and, 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 and Aaron said pastor take all the time that you need to Whatever fixes you need to make, take all the time that you need. Give us the best car. A month and a half went. Edder stopped shopping for a car, told his relatives he got a car, but he had no car. Let me ask you a question. Did he get a car or not? Yes, he did. How did you know he got a car? Because he got a promise from a pastor he trusts. When God, your pastor, the great shepherd, gives you a promise, and I'm talking, I'm not just talking about general, but it plants in your spirit and in your heart that this area is solved. Tears rolling down your eyes. You said, I got it! You get out of that promise and the symptoms are there. And the devil says, ha, you didn't get it. He said, devil, shut up. I got a promise. God is working on the bumper. God is changing the oil. God is changing the tires. My car, the keys are coming. Because if God said it, it settles it. I got the promise from God. I fight from that promise. I pray from that promise. I thank God from the promise. Because somebody give God some praise right now. Anybody here got a promise from God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And some of you, when you got that promise, you're carrying it in your wallet, but, but in here, you're carrying it right here. And I tell you, a month and a half later, it was a Friday night, brought the title and the keys. In a handshake, the keys went into his hand and he drove that car. And not only he had a promise, now he had the keys. I believe your healing is going to manifest in Jesus' name. I believe for those of you who received the promise, your child will be healed. 
and there's no med medical help but you're walking with that promise and the devil's whispering and say it's been so 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 long I want to tell you God wants to teach you to fight not for it but from it not for it but from it God wants you to know not just oh when is God going to manifest but if God gave you a promise God is working. God is fixing the bumpers. God is repainting certain things. God is changing the oil and the miracle. God is preparing the trust in His promise that it's coming true in Jesus' mighty name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Number four, don't stop ministering healing to others while you're waiting for healing for yourself. I believe this is crucial. So many people stop ministering to others because they are waiting for God to finish everything for them first. The guy whom God used to bring the baptism of the Holy Spirit on a worldwide scale, William Seymour, in the Azusa street, he came and preached the baptism of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongues to a group of people. The crazy part is he did not speak in tongues himself. <laughs> the church kicked him out. They said, what is this you're preaching that you don't have? He found a janitor who lent him his house. They went to this janitor's house and started to meet together and William Seymour for two years preached baptism of the Holy Spirit people are getting baptized in the Holy Spirit and he can't get it so he went from praying two hours to five hours every day he says God you gotta hook the brother up <laughs> what is this everybody's speaking in tongues and I can't and I'm the one who's preaching it this is a strange doctrine and after about two years the Lord baptized him in the Holy Spirit as well Smith Wigglesworth. Everybody loves Smith Wigglesworth. God used him powerfully to heal people, even to raise people from the dead publicly and he was witnessed by others. But Smith Wigglesworth for a long time had kidney stones. Sometimes he would have to finish his sermon fast and go out because there was blood all over his pants. His own daughter, either he, she, she had a deafness or, the, or the, I think it was deafness, but he had a problem also with his vision. She had a deafness for a very long time and she would sit right there in front of him. Deaf. And yet this man preached healing and you may object and say how dare you pray for others when you yourself can't heal yourself see you missed the whole point you're not preaching you you we're preaching Jesus we're not evangelizing ourselves we're evangelizing Jesus the first time healing happened in the Bible was when Abraham was asked by God to pray for healing you think of which kind of sickness you think it would be fever, lower back pain, knee problem? No, God said to Abraham, pray for Abimelech's women. For what? Because they're barren. Abraham's like, that's interesting. I've been praying for my wife who's barren for 15 years and she's not healed. And now God is asking me to pray for women for the very problem that my wife has. I ain't got experience in this area. I don't even have one YouTube testimony to encourage these women no testimonies I don't even know if God is so good to these women I have a problem with God why is he not healing my wife right now Abraham could have said I'm not praying for these women until God comes in and heals my own wife first how can I give what I don't have you have God and God got everything <laughs> how could Elisha get double portion if Elijah didn't have double portion if Elijah would have double portion he would walk in it that's why Elijah says what you asked is difficult but not impossible see that's what I want to tell you before God sometimes heals you at times he will test you by saying listen it's not about you it's about my love for people would you be willing to share it before I give it a manifestation of healing in your own body and if we're like Abraham who say Lord I am your vessel do as you please unto me I will serve other people and God will use you Joseph has a dream that dream gets him in trouble. You would think this would be a good moment to stop dreaming. He goes to jail and he notices two men have a dream. This would be a good moment to come and say, guys, can I give you a word of advice from a, somebody who's been through this, whatever you're going through right now, this dream stage. Um, <clears throat> forget about it. And don't tell anybody because if you do, one of you are going to die. No, Joseph sits down and says, tell me the dreams. Let, let me translate it. Translates the dream. Three days later, the dreams come true and Joseph is stuck in prison. 
how could you still translate dream for others if the dream from God for you is on delay but see Joseph doesn't think like that he says God it's not about me it's about you and I'm not going to stop ministering to someone because I'm not manifesting healing in my own life Jesus is being handcuffed in the garden of Gethsemane this is a good moment to put on your grocery store your healing store uh, we're closed healing is not happening right now why Jesus is going through a very difficult season Peter in the heat of the motion takes a knife and cuts somebody's ear off and Jesus says guys be, be, before you put the handcuffs hold on hold on one second one second uh, right here right here found the ear come over here puts the ear back it's like okay here's my hands you can continue 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 to handcuff me we got the healing done I think Jesus why would you want to take a moment to heal others when you yourself are about to be beaten on the cross he leads another person to salvation the guy decides to get saved right before he dies Jesus is dying Jesus is crying out to God why did you forsake me and the guy interrupts the whole prayer and says Jesus do you have a second I know I've been stealing and killing and doing a lot of bad stuff but I'm thinking I'm, I think I'm ready for the sinner's prayer you know that thing that you've been preaching on the mountain over there uh, I'm ready I, this will be a good one I said Jesus like you know what um uh, you know what you go to hell okay I'm figuring out between me and my father right now like the w weight of the world is on me and you're deciding to get saved this is not a good moment no no I said no <laughs> Jesus stops his prayer to the father and says of course repeat this after me Lord Jesus <laughs> he didn't do it like that he just simply saved him he's like I don't have time for the sinner's prayer you're saved <laughs> he's like okay amen don't use your pain as an excuse to fulfill your purpose don't use your pain as an excuse not to pray for others the Lord tested me in this area where a few times I was struck with fever that I had to take tablets upon tablets just to stand in the service and right before the service I had this voice are you gonna still pray for healing and I said well how can I pray for healing I'm like <coughs> I can't pray for healing I might ask people to pray for me and the Lord challenged me he says then you're praying for healing only when you're healthy he says do you know that I can heal them even when you're sick I said through a sick vessel he said God like, I can't do anything and I would pray people would get up sometimes 20 25 people testify of some crazy things while I sat on the first pew in some cities and couldn't get up because I was so sick and at the end of the service they had to help me and get me in the car why because it's not about me I believe in the Lord and those people who drove me he said you're sick what is this how could these people be healed and you're sick I know my Redeemer lives <laughs> Amen. I'm like get me home let me get some sleep I know whom I have believed and I am assured that everything's gonna be okay I'm just happy these people are healthy and that's all I'm like me and Jesus we'll figure that out a little bit later uh, he's like well can I pray for you I was like go ahead knock yourself out pray for me nothing happened he's like well maybe you don't have enough faith unconfessed sin I was like I'm really tired right now could you get me home do not allow yourself not to be used by the Lord because you're hurting and lastly celebrate the greatest miracle salvation while you're waiting for the lesser miracles like healing and breakthrough sickness will be defeated it was defeated is being defeated and will be defeated you will be free from sickness either in healing or in resurrection but you will be free when disciples cast out demons and they were so happy they came to Jesus and Jesus redirected their focus he almost rebuked them for their joy and he said do not rejoice the demons obey you in other words he would say to people who are healed he says do not rejoice that you're healed he said let me give you something bigger and better to rejoice over your name is written in the book of life whether you get healed or not one thing is certain you're gonna die and when you die your eyes get open you will see the king of glory all of the pain will be gone all the sickness will be gone sickness will be defeated do not think sickness is going with you to heaven it's not it's going to be defeated one way or the other it's a defeated foe it's doomed 
it's doomed so I don't want you to treat it as some kind of a Alexander the Great who conquered the world a sickness didn't conquer anything it's been conquered by Jesus it's been conquered by the Holy Spirit. It's been conquered by medical science. It's been conquered by faith. It's been conquered by prayer. It's been conquered by so many things. And the last thing is that when we step into eternity, it's going to be conquered again. But it's not permanent. It's not eternal. And therefore, we should not give it more glory than it has already influence over people. If you didn't get healed, if you won't get healed, if something happens, we know people die sick remember this as Christians we're still victorious we can't lose with Jesus we get healed we win we die we win it's like we still win and I think you have to make up that mind that we still win and when you will go to heaven I don't think you're gonna be like no Jesus send me back so I can get healed and die again and come back you'll be like Jesus you know what do not ever send me back there again I'm staying here every person who came back home after they seen Jesus the Lord of glory none of them even who had families wanted to come back to this body again because the beauty of heaven the beauty of Jesus everything you long for you'll be able to see there so can I encourage each one of you let's live for eternity but also let's live manifesting the kingdom of God here and now because the other side of this is also we should not look to death as our deliverer Jesus is our deliverer I don't want us to look to death oh that's when all the pain is going to be gone that means we're making death our deliverer but Jesus is our deliverer amen Holy Spirit is going to come into this room right now and he's going to put the devil to shame I believe today he's going to put sickness to shame. I believe today that he's going to restore your faith, encourage, strengthen your hands. He's going to show his glory. I feel a liquid love bubbling inside of my spirit for some people here today. The Lord is going to move right now. The atmosphere is going to change in just a moment. And the Spirit of God is going to minister healing. I want you to rise to your feet. Say this with me. Say, Oh Holy Spirit, come into this room right now to so fill this place with the love of God and the power of God let it enter my heart in Jesus name stretch your hands right now to heaven let's just welcome his presence let's just welcome his presence For the spirit of the Lord just lift a little bit higher the testimonies. We heard the testimonies.
Thank you for your love, Lord. Thank you for your grace. Right now, this moment, let's begin to ask God for His mercy. In His mercy, there is everything that you need. In His mercy, there is healing. There is breakthrough. There is all the good things of God are included in His mercy. Repeat after me. Say, Son of David, have mercy on me. Let your mercy and your favor speak for me. Say, oh, son of David, have mercy on me. Let your mercy and your favor speak for me. Right now, begin to open up your lips and begin to pray. Begin to ask for his mercy. Begin to ask for his favor. Begin to beg for his mercy to be stretched out to you. When blind man was following Jesus, he was running after him. He wasn't asking for healing just for healing's sake he was asking for his mercy because in his mercy there is more than you need begin to pray and ask Lord Jesus have your mercy on me have your mercy on me stretch out your hands God and have mercy upon my situation upon my heart upon my health upon my family my financial situation Lord upon my area where I'm stuck oh let your mercy see me through in Jesus mighty name I pray in Jesus mighty name and church uh, with, with your eyes closed put one hand on your heart and we're going to continue as we're engaging just repeat after me from your heart say the same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead quickens my mortal body Jehovah Rapha is my covenant healer and with his stripes I was I am healed in Jesus mighty name father we just confess that father we stand on your promise we stand on your promise as you are our healer the same Holy Spirit who raised Jesus from the dead lives in within me so Holy Spirit we connect ourselves with you we partner with you in the mighty name of Jesus we partner we stand in faith in Jesus mighty name we're gonna continue to pray right now and you know your body is that promised land and enemy has planted things he's planted giants he's planted sicknesses and it's not from God and it's not from you and you don't deserve it because Jesus paid for it on the cross and right now we're gonna say no devil let's say right now together with me say everything planted in my body by the devil I command it out everything planted in my body not by God be disgraced say sickness be disgraced devil be disgraced right now I say no I command you out come on pray right now say command it out whatever it is maybe it's fear maybe it's sickness maybe it's disease maybe it's some kind of a problem emotional mental problem command it out right now say devil get out of my body sickness get out of my body whatever the father did not plant whatever God did not give me whatever is not the will of God out of my body every headache every nightmare every fear every addiction every perversion get out of my life say it right now get out of my life devil 
devil, devil, get out of my life. I do not bow to you. I do not negotiate with you. I do not want you. You sickness. Jesus, get out in the name of Jesus. Come on, let's just raise those hands right now. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Spirit right now, just for the next 60 seconds. Every single person, if you if you have the, the prayer language, begin to pray in the Holy Spirit from the back to the front. Just begin to stir yourself up right now in the Holy Spirit. Pray in tongues. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you right now. Let the Holy Spirit pray through you. I believe that the Holy Spirit who lives in you, your body is His temple. He is more interested in ministering health and wholeness to you than you realize. Begin to say, Holy Spirit, fill me right now. And let the rivers of living water flow out of you right now. Let the rivers of living water begin to flow out of you right now. Because God is ministering healing in this place. God is healing somebody's lower back. The Lord is touching somebody's right knee right now. The Lord is also releasing a spasm in somebody's uh, upper neck and, and upper uh, neck right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Even somebody who's watch Lord is touching your ears right now the, the earring the ear, ear, earring that you hear in your ears this buzz the Lord is touching that right now just receive that as you pray in the Holy Spirit his power is flowing his grace is flowing through you right now connect to his presence connect to his grace connect to what has already been finished on the cross healing is yours as the children's bread in Jesus name Lord we decree that Lord we declare that we receive your grace we receive your power God God. if you can put the fifth prayer point right now say this with me say I release miracles of healing in my body in the name of Jesus I believe God for miracles of healing in my life and in my family wherever I go in Jesus name say I receive the touch of Jesus the finished work of Jesus on the cross to manifest in my body right now and I praise him as though it's happened in the name of Jesus every hand raised right now let's declare that he's the way maker he's the miracle worker he's making a way where there is no way he's manifesting that in your life right now this whole week we've been praying for this moment and it's happening right now yes for your truth we thank you that you're the same yesterday forever and the same you sit over the globe and your, your the earth is your footstool the heaven is your throne you're self-existent you are almighty everlasting to everlasting impossible doesn't exist in your vocabulary because nothing is impossible to you you're a great I am you're a mighty God we love you we praise you and we worship you Jesus every head bowed and every eye closed I want to give an opportunity for those people in this room and watching us on live stream who have not given their life to Jesus if I can ask everyone in the back as well to just for a moment close your eyes and bow your head if you are in this room today you've come but you have not made a decision to give Jesus your life maybe you're like Dana who shared earlier you're holding on to your life but God is asking you to let go today to surrender your life to him maybe you're living in sin heartbroken perhaps you used to serve God but you fell away from that relationship and today you're, you're, you're coming back and something in you tells you it's the Holy Spirit that you need to come back to Jesus I'm gonna give you that opportunity in just a second perhaps you've never had a relationship with the Lord you grew up just Catholic or a Christian and you associated that with religion rules and pastors making money off of the congregants and that's your view of religion and you're CEO Chris, Christian Christmas Easter only today is your day you need to surrender your life to Jesus just today a flight from Ethiopia that took off the flight crashed eight people from the United States died on it and so is everyone on the board your life is not guaranteed tomorrow 
Today is the day of salvation. Jesus gives you that opportunity right now. It's not an accident that you're here. It's not an accident that your friend invited you. It's not an accident you saw the Instagram or a Facebook post. Jesus is calling you. If you say, Vlad, you're speaking to me. I'm not what I'm supposed to be with the Lord. I need to accept Jesus in my heart. I need to be forgiven of my sin to escape the wrath to come. If you're one of those people, I'm going to count to three. And when I do so, I'm going to ask you to slip your hand as high as you can. One, two, three. Raise that hand high. Thank you. Thank you. Raise that hand high. Raise that. Thank you. Raise that hand high. If you're watching me on live stream right now, right, if just you just comment below or you write to our ministry, let, let us know that I want to get saved. For those of you who have your hand raised, I'm going to ask you to do something that's bold. I'm going to ask you quickly to get out of your seat and come and meet me right here. Just quickly, quickly. That person there, the young man right here, come, come right here. If you brought a person with you, bring it with you. Come, come. Church, as they're coming, put your hands together for them. If you need to get saved, you come. If you need to get saved, you come. If your dog needs to get saved, you bring him as well. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you need to get right with God, if you brought a friend with you, right now you can ask him, say, do you need to give your life to Jesus? Just come. Amen. We're going to pray the prayer together with them. Church, I want us to pray the prayer, prayer together right now with them. I want you to say this with me, guys. I want you to say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Please forgive me of all my sin and wash me with your precious blood. I repent of my sin. I come to you the way I am. Wash me with your blood. Make me new. Give me new life. Save me from my sin. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for watching this content. I know this was a blessing to you. We would like to ask you to subscribe to our channel and click on the bell on our channel so that each time we upload something, you can be notified. Don't forget to share this content with your friends and family and on social media. We're so thankful to you. Better is not good enough. The best is yet to come.